I would love for you to share with our audience about how you grew up and how that led to your professional career and then eventually how that led into the dental industry. Would you mind sharing that with us today? Yeah, sure. So um, I grew up in Arizona. I'm the oldest of four children and um, had two really hardworking parents. Actually, I'm not sure if I've ever more, met more hardworking people than my parents. Um, and um, I think that my upbringing actually led to my career path because uh, when I was 16, my father passed away. And like I said, both of my parents were really hardworking. So like without skipping a beat, my mom just kept on going and taking care of the family and was really, really diligent. And so I think kind of in mimicking that behavior um, and in an attempt to deal with things, I just uh, plugged in and whatever I was doing, I did it full-fledged, whether that was school or work or whatever I was doing, I just gave it my all. And I was going at a really fast pace, um, trying to grow into myself as an adult and also trying to manage my emotions. And I, you can only go at that pace, I think, for so long before it catches up with you, which it did with me. And that's where I started doing some research. At that time, it was um, a lot of books. And I was researching mm -hmm. and learning and trying to figure out like, hey, what's actually going on with me? And why do I feel like I'm kind of more of a shell of myself than actually experiencing my life? And mm -hmm. um, and I learned a lot. And I, um, and I was able to take a step back and kind of like deal with some of the things that were going on and make decisions from a different place so that I could actually um, be energized in the things that I was doing. Got it. And so roughly where, how, like what stage of life were you in? Were you in college at that time or where, where were you at in your life? Yep. He passed away when I was 16 and it took me a few years to really realize that I was not dealing with things. Like I think I was just doing the best that I could and um, not realizing that I was ignoring anything until it was just in my face. And then I was like, okay, so I'm not feeling fulfilled. What's going on? And I realized there was just some things lingering that I needed to deal with. Got it. And uh, I know imposter syndrome was something that you um, dealt with, right? It was because I was thinking, you know, my parents are really hard workers. My dad, I'm the first college graduate on my dad's side. So my dad had to work really, really hard to provide for us the way that he wanted to. And my mom put herself through college while we were growing up and she was working full time. So I'm doing wow. those motions, you know, I, I'm not sure that I even realized it was an option to not work that way. And, um, what, what caught up with me was I wasn't see, they were doing it from a place of like, that's what they wanted to do. And it fulfilled them. And it, it was, it was their choice. And I was doing it kind of just trying to go through the motions, thinking it was going to get me where I wanted to go and make me feel the way I wanted to feel. And mm -hmm. so, um, and that was early in my college career that I was just like, Hey, what, what, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. So how did you get on the right track? Where, where did you get, where was that tipping point where you're like, okay, now I'm actually doing what I want to do. Yeah. So I did, I did some research, I did some studying and I really, I, it's like once I found one book and, um, it just kind of, it really stuck with me and I still read it. Um, it's called as a man thinketh actually, it led me to other books and, I started like devouring them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I would read a concept, try it out. And I'm like, yeah, that, that seems true. That rings true for me. And then I'd try another one and I'm like, oh, this is getting better. <laughs> and, um, I was able to figure out what does Chelsea want and doing it from a place of genuine authenticity rather than because it's what somebody that I admired and looked up to did. Got it. So, so now you, you had a, kind of a mind shift, right? Um, probably a pretty transformational mind shift there. And you start moving in a different direction. When did, when did dental pop into your life? Yeah. So it's funny because numbers had always come really easy to me and I enjoyed them enough. And so I decided to study business finance in school. And at the time we were living in Gilbert, Arizona. And so I was out driving one day and I was passing by a building that I hadn't really paid much attention to out in Mesa. And I pulled up and walked inside and I learned that it was a dental school. And um, one of the directors was on his lunch and he offered to show me around. And I remember being so moved by it, like something about the energy in that building. So I took the information that he gave me and I thought really hard about changing 
course and going to dental school. And a part of me was so attracted to that, but something about it just didn't feel right. So I stayed the business. What, what, what was that? What was it? What, what felt good about it? And then what was the part that didn't feel right to you? What for sure felt good about it was the energy. I was attracted to um, the people there. I was attracted to what they were doing. It was a beautiful building. I don't know if you've been out there recently, but um, mm. it, it was just, it was almost um, contagious, the high level of productivity and desire to learn and advance yourself. And I love that. And so I love that feeling about it. But there was something that just didn't seem like the right move for me to make. And I, and I couldn't put my feeling or I couldn't put my finger on what that was. Then I know now mm -hmm. how it all comes full circle. It makes perfect sense. And I'm glad that it did. Mm -hmm. But yeah, at that time I just had to go with my gut mm -hmm. and began my career at Wells Fargo bank <clears throat> in a group that was implementing some updates to some systems processes. And I was there to help put those in place. And so um, I remember one of my supervisors actually coming and giving me a pep talk and she was kind of trying to tell me what I was getting myself into. And I wondered what she, where she was going with this, like, what did she mean? And I started working with the team and quickly learned that it wasn't the complexity of what it was that we were improving that was bottlenecking the changes um, because these were incredibly talented and intelligent people I was working with, but it was the apprehension to change um, and resistance to anything uncomfortable that was getting in their own way. And even though what the company was trying to put in place was ultimately going to make their professional lives better and easier, um, there was a lot of resistance. And so I think I was able to spot that dissonance um, mm -hmm. in them, the ability, like their abilities versus their mindset because of my own experiences earlier. And so I spent a lot of time like kind of reflecting on what I had learned and what had really helped me pull myself out of a out of a stalled position and mm -hmm. researched ways to coach and influence that team to help them help themselves through the project. And through those coaching experiences, I was really able to identify my passion and fire for developing EQ and high performing professionals. Now you weren't there. That wasn't your job, right? Like you, your job wasn't to coach them through that, right? Well, nobody told me to do that, but what I was required to do, <laughs> what I was required out, to do right? wasn't happening. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I'm not saying that you were off track or it was wrong. It was just like, they didn't bring you in to be a coach. They brought you in to get the job done. And then you ended up having to coach through it because it wasn't happening. And so that's what, how you found your passion, which is really cool. Um, and, and so you probably realized pretty quickly that Wells Fargo wasn't going to be the place that that was going to be fostered. Yeah, what was really interesting was that there was a supervisor nearby in another department and he was watching and noticing the transformation of this team I was working with. And um, not just from a tactical standpoint, but from like the morale and the energy that they were exhibiting. And so he pulled me aside one day and he was like, hey, what are you teaching them? And can I learn this too? So using the resources that I had been using with that team, I organized a curriculum to work through with him and it again, it worked. It produced the results that he was looking for. So he referred a friend of his to me who was a dentist and I coached him the same way and he experienced major improvements. And I had never forgotten that feeling that I'd had years earlier when I was walking through that dental school. And so now seeing that my passions and talents had helped a clinician, he became a really valuable thought partner for me. And I learned a lot about the variables that are unique to dentist lives, particularly, and in his case, um, dentists who are both practicing and a partner. And so he referred me some of his dental friends to work with. And I kept learning and refining with each client that I'd work with, which at that time was in the evening after my nine to five job. And <laughs> I came to realize a couple of things. The first was that this is a really underserved area, the need for mindset training for dentists. And the second was that I was able to provide value to these people. And so, that is um, so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, it's really, it's really energizing and it's amazing to be a part of that experience with them. But I finished my last contract in 2015, I think, and decided to dedicate my professional life to coaching dentists. And by that time, I'd partnered with some dental businesses, giving me some additional perspective and insight. And I'd coached several doctors. And what I didn't realize, Gary, and I'll tell you this, what I didn't realize when I stepped full time into entrepreneurship in the dental industry was that I was about to get the 
experience firsthand that a lot of my clients have. The things that I'm coaching them on were exactly the things I was walking right into. And I had thought, and actually this is a common, this is really common, but I had thought that because I was coaching on them and because I had the knowledge and the tools that it wasn't going to impact me. I'd already be ahead of it, but actually that wasn't, I still got the opportunity to exercise (laughs) those, (laughs) those things.